Whether UAS, UAV, or drone, seems like everybody's talking about these little guys when it comes to firefighting. But there are so many more uses for drones. Hi, I'm Grant Coffey, and we're talking drones today on FLIR Prime. <laughs> You know, drones are being used more and more by fire agencies. And when a tick is mounted to a drone, the life-saving factor can go up tenfold. You know, today I'm here with Jeff Pritcher, who's a Division Chief Fire Marshal and drone pilot here in Scappoose, Oregon. Thanks for joining us today, Chief. My pleasure. What do you think about drones and ticks mounted on a drone? What does that mean to you? Well, I'll tell you, it's a game changer. The capabilities and things that we're able to do by attaching a tick to a drone gives us the ability to see things that we would have never been able to see 10 years ago. If I were to categorize that even further, uh, it gives us the ability to uh, make decisions, tactical decisions, give us situational awareness uh, where we've never had before. Okay, so I think we both agree that it's a game changer, but other than just structure fires, what are some of the other applications for a, you know, a, a drone with a tick mounted on it that, that would enable us to do things at other situations? Right, and what we've talked about in the past is uh, the handheld thermal imagers, and those are great in a building. But sometimes when we're outside a building, uh, we need to be able to get that uh, bird's eye view type of situational awareness. In most cases, you can't see what's going on on the ground because of all the smoke. A thermal imager mounted on a drone gives you the ability to see through the smoke. Another example of this is we've got all these fires going on in our region right now, the wildfires, and they put up a lot of smoke. One of the challenges for firefighting resources is that manned aircraft cannot fly when there's smoke up in the air. Uh, it's too dangerous. But it's not too dangerous for these unmanned aerial vehicles or, or drones to go up in the air with a, a FLIR mounted uh, tick to be able to see through the smoke. And to take it a step further, some of the stuff that we're able to do now in terms of technology is we're able to take uh, the contours of slopes uh, and hillsides and overlay that to the image that we're getting from the FLIR uh, uh, tick mounted on drones. You know, that's awesome. And, and one of the things that we're big here at FLIR Prime is using knowledge to keep our people safe. One of the things I was thinking about as you were talking about that, what about the situation of keeping your people safe on a building that's potentially too large, subject to collapse with fire in the attic or in the roof? How about getting that drone up and can, can that help you see where the dangerous parts of the roof or where the fire is too hot to get people on the roof, thereby saving lives? Would that be a good use? Absolutely. Not all departments are set up like some of the big city departments. And where I'm going with this is that uh, in, in rural or smaller agencies that don't have all that extra manpower, having a drone up in the air that has a thermal imaging camera on it gives us that situational picture for the incident commander that they would never get. And when you're trying to identify a building that may collapse, being able to see those heat signatures in the corner of the building or coming out of uh, some of the rooftop vents is something that you would never get if you were at ground level. Do you think the expense of adding a tick to a drone, um, does that outweigh the benefits or is that something you think is, is pretty integral to that, the whole concept of having that for safety? You know, I don't think so. Uh, it depends on who you're talking to, but I personally believe that the expense uh, that one, one would put out for this type of technology will reap the rewards uh, well before they would ever truly feel some sort of financial uh, uh, implication to their budget. And the reason why I say that is because it's all about saving a life. That's why we do what we do. And this technology can help save a life. Uh, it does it in an expedient fashion. It does it uh, in a way where um, we're able to see things that we can't see or couldn't see before. Um, and it does it with limited manpower. And I think that's one of the, the key items here because we're all running into situations where we don't have the manpower we need. I think we all, we all agree that uh, uh, it, it's a price that we, we wanna pay if it saved one, one life. Can you, can you think of an instance maybe in wildland fighting or something that you've been on, can you walk us through a situation where you used a tick and it was a specific help on some incident that you had? 
Absolutely. Uh, just a couple days ago, we were on a fire uh, where we could not get any manned aircraft uh, up to, to, to scout out for our field guys down on the ground, all the firefighters on the ground. And uh, we were able to get an unmanned aerial vehicle up in the air and it was able to see through the smoke and we were able to guide them to where uh, we were having spot fires. Now, in any other day, they would never have had that, that ability or the opportunity to get to that fire and put it out before it got larger. Have you been on, on an incident where you used a, or saw a tick being used uh, with, a, with a drone for search and rescue, let's say, in, in areas like that? Absolutely, uh, especially in these water areas that are very uh, uh, prevalent for us in our district. Uh, getting one of these vehicles up over the Columbia River um, has, has helped out significantly. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't have the ability to either get somebody in a boat and get out there, but we can launch these UAVs or UASs, the drones, and we can get them out, of the out over the water uh, to, to be able to see down that situational awareness that we need. And we've actually seen people, uh, you know, struggling, uh, trying to get back to shore, and we can actually direct the rescuers back to where they're at. There was another situation where um, a father and son were stuck out in a boat in one of the sloughs, uh, but nobody knew where they were at because the river was a, a, a continual maze of, of channels and turns. Uh, so what we did is we got our aircraft up in the air, uh, flew it over them, and we were able to guide the deputies who didn't have the technology uh, right to the spot where the father and son were and help them out of their situation. You know, I'm really con uh, uh, concerned with and interested in your take on this. Um, these are, they're big, they're, they're not toys, and there's a lot of them out there. I've heard some people talk about potential dangers of operating in, in an environment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Are these dangerous or as a pilot uh, of these drones, uh, what kind of considerations do you have to, t to take in mind when you're operating these? You know, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. So. The, the technology is new, and it's so new, in fact, and interesting and exciting that we're talking about it here on this show. The challenge is we need to make sure people are doing things the right way. Right now, across our country, there are rules in place where uh, if a manned aircraft sees an unmanned aerial vehicle, they have to shut down all operations. And the reason for that is the lack of communication. And as you know, communication is, is that core component that we need for all incidents. So. In order for fire agencies to fly these unmanned aerial vehicles, they need to make sure that they have the appropriate training uh, and understanding of how to coordinate with the air attack on these big wildland fires so that we don't have to set down the big air tankers or the other helicopters. Essentially, it's really important that any agency that wants to get involved with unmanned aerial vehicles uh, goes through the appropriate training, gets licensed through the FAA, and has a good set of uh, protocols or guidelines uh, in order to, to use this in, in a, an efficient and safe way. That is awesome. Thank you, Chief Pritchard. I appreciate it. You've got such a great facility. But what interests me, and I, I hope the viewers, is that you've got some knowledge base that can help you guys out there decide how you want to get involved with this type of equipment and learn more about it. And, and again, I'd like to thank you again. Uh, great place here. Head to flare.com slash prime to check out our other videos and download some great classroom materials. We'll see you next time on Flare Prime.